Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our interview with W. Curtis Preston. Curtis is an expert in backup and recovery systems, a space he has been working in since 1993. And he has written uh, four books on the subject, the fourth of which is Modern Data Protection from O'Reilly was published in uh, May last year. And he is a fellow host uh, uh, of the Restore It All podcast and the founder and webmaster of BackupCentral.com, a website uh, dedicated to backup and recovery community. And he is now the chief techni uh, technical evangelist at Druva, a data protection as a service company. So, Kurtia, thank you for coming to our interview today. Always happy to talk about my favorite topic. Absolutely. It's an interesting topic. And we, today we will discuss a uh, uh, topic uh, using a SaaS service or software as a service uh, uh, for data protection and resilience. But before that, uh, Curtis, could you please uh, tell us a short story about yourself, uh, ca your career path, uh, what brought you to where you are right now and what you have been up to these days? So uh, like a lot of people, I got into the backup space because it was the only job I could get, right? Um, that was, you know, I wanted to get into computers and the backup guy at a big bank back back in 93, that was the job I could get. Because one thing that hasn't changed from the backup space in the last uh, 30 years has been that nobody wants the job, right? It, it's the it's the plumbing or the trash, you know, of the data center. It, it's a super hard job. You're invisible or you're in trouble. And, uh, but, I, but through a series of circumstances, I just really never got out of it. And about 20 years ago, I started recognizing that I had developed, you know, a specialty, <laughs> an accidental specialty. And then I just started branding it, right? So then it was a matter of, I started writing that, you know, I wrote my first book back in, uh, it was published in December of 99, just in time for Y2K. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, my first article, I wrote a, I wrote an article in, in Unix Review, a magazine that's not around anymore. And I got like 75 emails from around the world about how helpful it was. And that, that was the publishing bug for me. So I've spent my career mostly working with, you know, end user type companies and consulting and helping them do the job. And about four years ago, I joined Druva. This is actually my first vendor. Uh, and it's a, a SaaS based uh, product where you, you don't, you don't need to do all of the stuff that I spent my career helping people do. You just, you just use the product. Wow, it's interesting. Actually, I myself, I, I was, uh, I started my, started my career also about uh, whatever it was, uh, 40 years ago as an operator in, uh, <laughs> in the big, uh, I think it was IBM 360 or something. Uh, so we had to do some uh, backup at night, uh, like with this yep. uh, cas cassettes, like, I don't know how they the call big, it. The big, the nine tracks, the big round yeah, ones, yeah, right? Yeah, those were nine right. tracks. Yeah, uh, <laughs> exactly. It was nice uh, night uh, night stuff, night shifts. <laughs> yep. But uh, uh, so I uh, must uh, say that we had the same beginning of the career, but I didn't uh, stay <laughs> on the path. So yeah. I, re I recognize the bug in the publicity because uh, I myself started, um, um, I was uh, progressed a little bit to uh, risk management and they started then publishing. So we kind of in the same yeah. stream, but uh, a little and, bit different streams. <laughs> you know, the interesting thing is backup, you know, and, and resilience and all of this, it really is a risk management function. Um, we, all we do, we can't, you know, you know, I'm telling you what you already know, you can never completely get rid of risk. It's a matter of figuring out which risks that you're wanting to protect from and what you're willing to spend to, to get rid of those risks, right? So it, we spend so much of our time just trying to identify the, the you know, to, to, to answer that question because you can't get rid of all of it ever. Yeah, absolutely. So let's uh, jump uh, straight into the topic. So what, tell us a kind of um, um, general question. What are the most, most, uh, main challenges and risk of uh, backing up data using uh, traditional on-premises on uh, backup systems? Yeah, so today I'd say 
the, the, the biggest risk is the cybersecurity risk. We, we figured out so much of the, the technical aspect. There, there were some issues with tape over the years. Uh, tape actually became quite problematic as a, as a backup medium. It, it actually got too fast. Most people don't understand that, but it actually got too fast for the job. And uh, so it's really best for long-term storage. So we, we technically, we address so many of the challenges that we had over the years, but the challenge that, um, and, and, and what that was about, the traditional data protection was about protecting against user error, right? The number one reason we reached for a backup tape was, was somebody did something stupid, right? They, they deleted a file or <clears throat> you know, accidentally deleted a record in a database or something, or it was a natural disaster. And when you're protecting against all of that, that that's mainly a technical, you know, uh, challenge, right? All of that has pretty much been met, but what happened uh, with, with a little bit, the, the disaster recovery part, most people, most companies have actually a really poor DR system. If, if they have one at all, they have a, a box of tapes in Iron Mountain uh, and that's not a DR system. The, but the biggest risk I would say today that, that most companies are not protecting well from is the cyber attacks, um, the privilege escalation attacks or um, credential theft uh, and not, not using MFA, uh, multi-factor authentication to, to prevent somebody if they get credentials to be able to log in. And of course, uh, I, I can't speak for more than a few minutes without talking about ransomware. Ransomware yeah. is um, is getting bigger and it's getting more sophisticated, and we have to do our best to protect against that risk. Mm -hmm. But oh, so what I was saying, sorry, the, the reason why I'm saying that the cyber risk is the biggest challenge is that when you look at the traditional world, it's a real challenge because you the backup system, as I mentioned, it, it's often run by a junior person. It is not run by a person that has a, a, a good amount of experience in cybersecurity. And so the backup system, while it is very much a big attack point and therefore a big risk to your organization, it, it isn't well secured. And it's difficult to, to secure it properly because it's sort of the, you know, it's the it's the afterthought of many data centers. They think about the production database, the mission critical web server, you know, the email application. But behind all of that is this backup server that's being ignored. And because it's being ignored, it's, um, you know, it's at risk uh, of, a, of a significant cyber attack. And there are, there are now like the Conti ransomware group, C-O-N-T-I, is specifically targeting backup servers. They're not, not even going after the production server. No. They're specifically targeting backup servers. And I think it's because they've recognized that it is a, a soft spot in the data center. Uh, wow. I never heard about the specific. Uh, specific uh, so uh, how, can you explain how, the, how does uh, migrating to a, a company's uh, backup to a cloud provider uh, mitigate this uh, risk? It's a great question. So the, the reason is that the job of you transfer this, this really important job, right? This is just like a philosophical discussion. You transfer this really important job away from this uh, junior person away from, you know, it was this ignored system in the corner of your data center, you transfer that responsibility to a company whose this is now their primary function and primary, you know, um, raison d'etre, right? They, um, they have a, um, you know, it's, it's about the core competency. They have a core competency in this area. They have specialists in cybersecurity, cybersecurity in backups, right? And so they, um, they can always make sure that the systems are automatically, and that's another key is when you do things in the cloud, you can do things like automatically upgrade to the latest security systems, automatically enforce security policies across 
your entire environment. It's just built into the way the cloud works. And so what you get is you go from this incredibly secure system or insecure system to an incredibly secure service that you, that you, and you don't have to do anything but use it. You don't have to be an expert in cybersecurity and ransomware uh, to use a service that, that is an expert. Does that make sense? Other, yeah, sure. But are there are some more specific attacks that are happening uh, to these centers. I know that was kind of Amazon uh, uh, web services. There were some kind of uh, issues a few years back, and uh, there are some issues with other providers. Uh, do you have some examples of? Uh... Yeah, yeah. So there, there have been um, lots of. So first off, you know, th there's a couple different discussion points there. One is. Uh, you know, is it safe to have data in the cloud, right? Is the cloud secure? And I would say, and again, we, we could have an entire podcast just on that discussion, but I would say that I would trust the security of the average cloud system versus security of the average data center any day of the week, right? Number one. And number two, you know, because because basically you, ha you have an entire company who's... The, if they're found to be insecure, they basically just go out of business, right? So they, they, they need to be secure. Um, there are uh, concerns every once in a while, because, well, didn't Amazon go down, you know, a few weeks ago? It's like, yes, they, they have outages just like anybody else, but not, not all of Amazon, just a portion of Amazon, right? Just this service or that service or this data center or that uh, even an entire region might go offline, but you design around that, right? Um, but in terms of th there, there are risks in the cloud. Th the cloud is not perfect. And so when you are using the cloud, so if you're using AWS or uh, Azure or GCP or Microsoft 365, all of those services need to be protected from a data data backup perspective, the probably the biggest thing I find myself explaining to customers is they have this simplistic view of the cloud, where, well, I have it in the cloud, and so I don't have to worry about backups anymore. To which I'm like, no, 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 no. There's still a risk up there, right? There's still a risk. The cybersecurity risk still exi still exists. Uh, you know, and, and we're still humans and we still do dumb things, right? You might delete a user, you might delete an account, you might delete a server. And if you don't have an offsite backup of that data, then you are going to lose that data forever. And, and there are a couple of really good examples there. The, the biggest of which there was a company called uh, Code Spaces and they were a safe space to store your code. This is mm -hmm. what's so ironic about it is they were literally advertising as to be a safe place to store your code. They got hacked. They did not have uh, multi-factor authentication. The, the hacker had their main admin password. He, he gave them a ransom. They didn't pay the ransom. He deleted their company. Uh, Boom. The company no ceased company. to exist, right? Uh. They didn't follow all of the usual best practices that you should follow. You should, obviously you should have a backup. They had backups, but they stored all their backups in the same account. Don't uh, do that. <laughs> Don't store your backups in the same account. Don't store your backups in the same region, right? So they didn't do any of the usual best practices that a customer would do if they're using the cloud. Again, which is why you use a service to do this, because you will ensure that you are using the best practices uh, for your data. Mm -hmm. So... Tell us a little bit, how does a SaaS-based data, data backup and recovery system differ one of each other? Yeah, so if you're, gonna, if you're not going to use SaaS, the, the, easiest, the easiest way, are you familiar with Exchange, Microsoft Exchange? No, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so, so you know, it's an email system that, um, that uh, we would use in a data center. And... If you had Exchange, you had a server in your data center and you installed Windows and you installed Microsoft Exchange and you patched it and you managed it and you had to size it. You had to make sure you have enough storage for all of your email users. Or you could just use Microsoft 365, right? 
um, which is an email service, and you don't have to worry about any of that infrastructure. You just need to add users and take away users. That's the difference between an on-prem system and a SaaS-based service. Mm -hmm. We are the same. If you are, if you're anything that's not SaaS, you have to size that backup system. You have to secure that backup system. You have to buy all your stuff in advance, typically uh, three to five years in advance. You design this system and you, you buy stuff that you don't need for five years. You buy it today and you pay for it today. And then it goes unused for, the, for most mm -hmm. of the time. Yeah. And, uh, and then you have to secure that system the whole time, or you just use a service and all of that sizing and designing and securing and managing work is left up to the SaaS provider. So in our case, you don't need a backup server. You don't need one either in your data center or in the cloud. You just, yeah. um, you just put, we use the, the concept of agents, right? So if you're going to back up VMware, you need our VMware agent. If you're going to back up a laptop, you need the laptop agent. It's just a little piece of software that goes on the, the system being backed up. And then that communicates directly to our service up in the cloud. And you don't have to worry about any of the infrastructure that um, that's required. So it's it's just basically you get out of the backup business and you can just be in the restore business. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Can you tell us a little bit the difference between uh, different um, vendors uh, what uh, do the services they offer uh, same level of risk or what a differentiation between the vendors in this space? Well, it, it, it's difficult because it, it, it's not so much the vendor that is just it, with an on-prem backup system, the risk is that you don't configure it correctly. The risk is you don't configure your backup server correctly, that you don't put in the latest patch. Right. The number one reason people get ransomware attack is that they didn't have the patch that stopped that ransomware attack. Right. So, you know, I, I talk to people that are in the field and, and the vast majority of ransomware attacks would simply be stopped by people just having their patches updated. Right. Mm -hmm. So the risk with your backup system, if you're using any of our competitors, is that you don't have that system properly configured um, and properly protected and updated. And, and it's, a, it's a real risk because it's not the system that everybody looks at every day. It's not the database server or the web server that people think about. It's the backup server over there in the corner. Um, and so it's the last to get the patches when in reality, it should be the first to get the patches. So we, we remove that risk uh, in, in, in the service. Mm -hmm. So can you explain a little bit in a few words, how, how is the process of backing up and recovery large data center from the cloud? Is it difficult or how is it going? How will it, it takes hours or days? Yeah, so, so yeah, so great question. So the, the very, so the one challenge that we have as a service is if you have a very large data, you know, big bunch of data here and you need to back it up to the cloud here, the very first, time you go to do that, you may need to use, uh, depending on your size, it, most of our customers don't do this, but you may be a very large data center, something measured in many hundreds of terabytes, many petabytes. If you do that, you might do what's called a seeding um, uh, service where uh, our, our technology runs on AWS and AWS would send you a, a one or many boxes that are automatically designed to work with our system. You back up to that box, you hand that box back to UPS, that box gets sent to Amazon and they upload it. That's called seeding. So the, the first backup can actually be, even with a really large data center, only a few days. Um, subsequent backups are very simple and very easy and actually very quick. So then the next question would be, well, what about a very large restore? So you know, my entire data center died so there are three ways to address that concern. One is you can have an on-prem system that you use as a cache to us. We offer that service, no additional charge. You do need to provide the, the system upon which that would run. Um, or you can do the reverse seeding where Amazon will ship you a box with your data on it. Uh, this is my least favorite option because it takes many days, right? They have to copy the data to the system, they have to ship the data to the system, and then you can begin the restore. It's the least favorite option, but it is the cheapest one. 
The best option, I think, is if you have data where you need to restore that data in hours, <clears throat> then uh, we would recommend our DR in the cloud option. We offer DR as a service, and we can re restore your entire data center into the cloud uh, in 15 to 20 minutes uh, with, uh, with an RPO, recovery point objective, of, of an hour. And so basically, th there, there is nothing from a timing and uh, et cetera perspective that you can do with an on-prem system that you can't do with a cloud system. We just do it differently. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. I would like to, to hear your personal opinion. Uh, what is the commonly held belief or uh, uh, biggest misconception in your field of uh, backup and recovery that you strongly disagree with? Well, uh, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you the biggest, and that is, and I've mentioned it already, and that is that SaaS services like Microsoft 365, Salesforce, and G Suite do not need backup. Um, it's very frustrating. Our, our, our number one competition in our Microsoft 365 space is nothing, meaning the customer, you know, our competitor is that the customer is doing nothing from a backup perspective. Mm -hmm. the, the 365 is probably the, 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 the chief offender here because they have so many features that look like backup. They use words like restore, right? But restore implies that you're copying it from a backup. That isn't what's happening. It's just a big database. And when you delete a file, it doesn't really delete it. It just deletes, it sets a flag in the database. So it doesn't really go anywhere. And when you restore it, as I you know, make quotes in the air, you're not really bringing it back from anywhere. You're just unsetting the flag in the database and you're just bringing the, the record back. Um, so if something catastrophic were to happen with your account in 365, the tools that they have are either going to be woefully up to the task or you know not up to the task, or they're going to be completely incapable of doing the restore. The only way to do that is to have a third party backup system. So that, that's the, the number one misconception that I have. I don't run into that too much in cloud resources like AWS or Azure. People understand you've got to back up that stuff, but the SaaS services, there's there seems to be this this thought that they're they're somehow magic and they don't need backup, and that's just very frustrating for somebody who mm -hmm. has spent his entire career, you know, trying to help people to protect against their data loss. I understand. So, for example, if we take a life of uh, average uh, risk manager. Uh, if there is one thing that they should start to prioritize right now that they are not doing, or what would it be? I would say to look into how you're securing your backup system and to see if, if what I'm describing is a reality, to see if the people that are protecting your data are placing, are putting the protection of that data at a high enough priority or are they are they placing the the speed of your production database is that their priority is some is someone in your company looking out after the the cyber security of your data protection system it probably works it probably doesn't have a good dr system so i would also look at that i would look at does your company have a dr plan is it well defined are your requirements defined and do you have a backup and dr system that's capable of meeting those requirements and chances are the answer will be to no to both of those questions, right? You don't have someone that's really, that understands cybersecurity that's looking out after your backup system. And you probably don't have a well-defined DR plan and certainly don't have a backup system capable of meeting that DR plan. And I would suggest that you at least take a look at Druva. Um, and, you know, we are the, the most, uh, you know, the longest running and most well-rated uh, uh, data protection as a service company. Um, you know, if you're interested, I would go to, to druva.com slash podcast. And uh, right now we have, a, you know, a, a Gartner report that'll, you know, tell you about us. But um, it, it, it's, this is like, come on in, the water's warm. Stop, stop cooking and, you know, doing your own stuff and just have have a service do it for you and just remove that risk altogether. Fantastic. 
maybe uh, can you a uh, little bit uh, tell us a short story uh, what's something that you or your team have recently achieved that you are really proud of maybe if you don't want to throw names it's not necessarily just uh, yeah <laughs> so what i what i really like is when we help a customer in a difficult situation there there is um there is a company that moved off of one of our competitors because they were concerned about ransomware and we actually had the case study on our on our site and they they moved off of because because what i was saying was true right that that that, that they had this they they had a windows based backup system windows based backup systems are, are are very risky because the ransomware is specifically targeting windows right <clears throat> and they moved off of us and within um like a matter of months they actually did get a ransomware attack and we were able to very quickly very successfully navigate them through that ransomware attack so that they ended up not paying the ransom that to me is um that's the that's why we're here and it, it kills me as a person who's spent his his whole career helping to people protect data when i see these articles of ransomware attack after attack and i see this little line in there saying and the backup server was also uh compromised that kills me because they spent all this time and effort and money to protect their data and then in the end the tool that they thought they had to as a resource in the ransomware attack was completely useless so uh, you know that's um that's my favorite story is when we actually and, it, and by the way it's not we have many stories where we um uh helped customers recover from a ransomware attack okay fantastic so maybe as a fellow uh, community uh, kind of leader or podcast uh, host uh, can you share with us a uh, uh what are your your um, tips how we as a global risk community uh, can contribute uh, to better understanding of this uh, complex world of risk yeah i i think it's just a matter of just uh, you know you you said early early on you had said that you were unaware of these risks um i would just make yourself aware of those risks um and start you know if, if you're if you're interested in this especially if you're a technically minded person uh you know check out my podcast which is the restore it all podcast on backup central we cover this every week we cover some sort of topic my my favorite um episode this year was um we had a guy that was the IT person for uh the the largest island in uh, it's Kodiak it's a Kodiak island in Alaska Alaska. And he needed to do something where he wanted to move around a bunch of data. And his method of doing that was to delete all the data, redo his RAID systems, and then restore it from his backup system. What he realized during this process was that he had never tested his backup system. Oh. So he it was a self-inflicted wound, right? He had, he, had, he had deleted all his data, and now he was testing his backup system. It, it, it came out OK but you know he admits that but it, it took a lot longer than he thought and and he admits that it was a really dumb thing to do but it was it's a great episode uh and we have you know so many more like that we have a great one about a a, a guy that was in the middle of a you know caribbean island when you know when a, a disaster happened and they they had to recover their entire data center from a disaster so we have great stories from you know people that are that are living this day to day and that that would help you understand this world i think Okay, yeah, fantastic. So uh, I'm not sure if if I got to ask uh, you something that would you like uh, would you be, uh, like to add uh, that will benefit our audience. Um, you know, uh, you know, I, I hate to say it, but buy my book. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh yeah, books um, for, for so books. yeah. <clears throat> um, Modern data protection from O'Reilly. It's written at a pretty high level, so even if you're not that technical of a person, you should be able to grasp most of what's in there um and it gives you a really good idea about the risk it gives you an idea about how to translate that risk into requirements for the business and then it talks about the various ways that you could potentially uh address that risk and uh it's it's only 
I think it's 350 pages, something like that. Uh, so it's not a terribly thick book. It's the, it's this one right here. The the that's the oh. armadillo. That's the cover of armadillo. the book. Oh, okay. That's a, a seven banded <laughs> armadillo from South America. I think is the the animal mm -hmm. that O'Reilly chose for the cover. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. So maybe last question uh, if finalizing. If someone who is listening uh, uh, would like to walk away only with a few um, uh, to remember only a few takeaways from all this long episode, what would it be? Um, I would just say, you know, consider getting out of the backup business, right? First off, just understand that your cloud-based data does need to be protected. We are moving up into the cloud. The cloud is not magic. The cloud is just somebody else's computer, right? So uh, just realize that that data needs to be protected. And I would suggest looking into getting out of the backup business altogether and letting someone else do it, someone who specializes in it. And of course, Druva uh, has been doing that now, um, you know, for many years. And we'd have to, we'd be happy to talk to you. All right, fantastic. Thank you, Curtis, for your uh, for your time and for your very informative interview. And hope we will be in contact, contacting with you, uh, maybe with uh, regards to another interview in a few months and see how it works. Uh, probably we are kind of fellow com communities uh, can keep uh, in touch. Absolutely. All right. Thank you.